Hello, welcome to my channel. Another bibliophile reads. My name is Greg, and today I want to talk about what owning a Kindle can do to your book buying habits. This is a Kindle. It makes me buy books. This is a Kindle scribe. It also makes me buy books. And I buy them because many times Kindle books are available for quite a steep discount. I rarely buy a Kindle book at full price. That would only be if there is a situation where I'm in a book group or something. There is a, there's a group read somewhere where I need the book right away. And the only way to get it is to pay full price. Normally, I make a list on my Amazon account and I wait for books to drop in price. And that makes me buy a lot of books, more books than I can possibly read, which is why I'm doing the Read What You Own Challenge. And today, I'm going to give you what Kindle books I have purchased between August 20th and October 20th. There are 36 books. It cost me a total of $62.70. The cheapest book was for free, and the most expensive book was $3.99. Now, I have um, split up the purchases I have made roughly in the categories of literature, mystery, crime, science fiction, and horror. Just so if people like certain kind of books more than others, they can skip ahead to see what books I, I bought in their favorite category. So, what have I been buying? Blood on the Forge by William Attaway for $1.99. This is part of the New York Review Books Classics, and it is a novel originally published in 1991 about three African Americans crossing the country. Whole by Herorico Olimpimada. I'm certainly butchering the pronunciation. She is Japanese. Um, it is about a wife and her husband who encounter a hole in their backyard, I believe. Steppenwolf by Herman Hesse, 199. This will be a reread for me. I own the audiobook. Um, I have read the paperback, but I could not resist the $1.99 special. Our Share of Night by Marina Enriquez. $2.99, translated from the Spanish. It is about a father and son in South America who are exploring their family heritage. Who It is... um. A rather horrific. The Keening by our own Margaret Pennard for $2.99. She is a fellow booktuber. And um, I finally bought one of her books, which will be read for the Read What You Own Challenge. And it is an historical novel set in Ireland. The Cider House Rules by John Irving. $2.99. This is the novel he published, I think, shortly after The World According to Garp. It is the story of an abortionist before Roe versus Wade and his favorite unadopted orphan. The Trees by Percival Everett. This was $3.99 and is the most expensive book that I bought for this list. Um, it is the story of essentially Emmett Till in a fictionalized setting. And um, there is is um, basically detectives searching about murders in Mississippi. Now traveling into mystery territory, we have The Old Dick by L.A. Morse. 99 cents. This is about a retired private eye, Jack Spanner, 
who may have gotten old, but he has a new case to solve. The First Day of Spring by Nancy Tucker, 199. Meet Cassie. Cassie is eight. She has a secret. She has just killed a boy. Are Snakes Necessary? by Brahmin De Palma, 199. Yes, that is the film director, Brian De Palma. I believe it is written with a co-author, and I probably the co-author wrote most of this book. But when the beautiful young videographer offered to join his campaign, Senator Lee Rogers should have known better but say no would have taken a stronger man than Rogers. This is in the hard case crime line. And I love those books. I have a whole bunch in paperback, but again, $1.99, can't say no. Call Me a Cab, Donald E. Westlake, $1.99, also in the hard case crime line. The final unpublished novel by Grandmaster, A Wild Romantic Road Trip Across America by Taxi Cab, demonstrates why this beloved author is so fondly remembered and dearly missed. Titanium Noor by Nick Harkaway, $2.99. The virtuosic myth, a virtuosic mashup of Philip K. Dick and Raymond Chandler by way of the Marvel story detective investigating the murder of a Titan, one of society's most powerful medically enhanced elite. Dick Harkaway is the son of Jean Le Carré. The Once and Future Spy by Robert Littal. $2.99. This is an espionage novel, and the CIA has someone leaking secrets. Trouble on Triton by Samuel R. Delaney, $2.95. This is my sole science fiction purchase between these months. This is a novel written in the 70s, and it is a story of a colony on the moon of Titan, which is around Saturn, or is it Neptune? And it is going to war with Earth. It also features, if I am not mistaken from my memory when I read it in the 80s, a sex change character. Very interesting. Now we spread into horror, which is the bulk of what I purchased. The Devil's Mountain by Jack Harding. It was free. And what was that book about? Deep in the Grunwald forest, lurking in the silent winter fog, lies a man-made hill forged from the ruins of World War II. On top of the hill stands an old spy station that's been empty since the fall of the Iron Curtain nearly 30 years ago. I think this is a novella. Swarm by James Flynn. Free. The town of Drayton is crumbling with crime and violence, perpetrating round the clock. Prisons are bursting to the point, and morale is an all-time low. The governor's answer is Swarm, a revolutionary new prison. Swarm is a correctional facility like no other harnessing the power of innate subconscious minds for the benefit of the town. The facility is the work of genius and the town soon begins to prosper. The House Next Door, Tor Tom Coleman, free. The House Next Door, a short horror story Mr. Sprogling looks like an ordinary grumpy neighbor with a penchant for growing roses, but he has a dark secret hidden deep inside his house, a secret no one knows about. 
Sarah decides to find out if he is just a sweet, lonely widower or a twisted man with a mysterious past. Chaotic Yesterdays of Impeccable Greed by Seth Kinstall. Free. People get a little greedier everywhere. They go crazy and things happen that shouldn't. Everyone loses their mind over the simplest luxuries. So who am I to dwaddle in the darkness if I don't own the world? A little disgust. The Portrait by Evelyn Charters. Free. The Portrait is a gothic fantasy about Victoria Frost, an author who develops an unhealthy obsession for her character. As events unfold, her infatuation soars, forcing Victoria to question her sanity. Is she simply slipping into madness, or is there something else at play? Best of Luck by Jason Mott. This is the first of a series of six creature feature horror novellas published exclusively at Amazon. I don't have a description of this book. Second in the creature feature, It Waits in the Woods by Josh Mellerman, 99 cents. No, yes, uh, Best of Luck was also 99 cents. Some chilling campfire tales ring too true to ignore for one young woman. An urban legend calls to her into the woods in a spine-tiggling short story about the best-selling author by Bird Box. The Pram by Joe Hill, 99 cents. A husband's obsessive desire for a child leads to an unexpected manifestation of his yearning in a nightmare short story about fatherhood dreams by his acres by the by yeah by his fatherhood dreams by new york times best-selling author joe hill joe hill of course is stephen king's son big bad by chandler baker 99 cents for a family trying to make an isolated farmhouse into a home Fear and rage are getting harder to control in a primal short story. Ankle Scratcher by Grady Hendrix, 99 cents. Yes, this is the man that has increased the price of horror paperbacks. Marcus grew up believing his father killed his mother, then blames. It on the boogeyman under the bed. In Bloom by Paul Tremley, 99 cents. Again, creature feature collection. Heidi Cohen is in Cape Cod investigating the sources of reoccurring toxic algae blooms along the coast. A local named Jimmy has his own theory for her. Every year the feel, the fetid growth gets worse, but that he's, uh, is going on longer than anyone knew decades ago. Something happened to Jimmy that he's never forgotten. Is Heidi ready for the real story? Audrey Rose by Frank DeFitka. 99 cents. Audrey Rose, when Elliot Hoover loses his wife and daughter, Audrey Rose in a fiery car crash, his world explodes to heal his mental anguish and claim some peace. Ivy Templeton, a young girl living in New York City, desperate to reclaim anything from his daughter's past, as he searches out Ivy only to discover that the unbelievable is shockingly true, and his daughter is back. Jesurk, Florida, Florida by Hunter Shea, 99 cents. Florida 
It's where you go to die. Iguanas, they're everywhere. Sounds cheesy. Rattus New Yorkus, Hunter Shea, 99 cents. New York City's rat population is growing, and Dr. Randolph Finch is determined to solve the problem with his new rodent side. Mm. The Devil's Fingers by Hunter Shea, 99 cents. What has long pink fingers and smells like rotting flesh? It is slime. It is a slime covered fungus known for its pinkish red tentacles, pungent odor. It is indigenous to Australia, but has spread to North America. The Lone Woman by Victor Laval. This is a cross between historical fiction and horror. It is the story of an African-American woman who travels out west to escape the sins of her parents. And that was a 199. The Shining by Stephen King, 199. I read this many, many years ago, and you all know the story of Jack Torrance. He goes to the Overlook Hotel with his wife and son, only to discover that the hotel is haunted. The Manitou by Graham Masterton, 199. Again, this is a story that I have read long ago. I um, unhauled the paperback. But you know, at $1.99, you have to say yes to the Manitou. This is the story of a woman in, I believe, New York City, who goes to the doctor about a strange growth on her back, only to discover that it is a human fetus, and the fetus is growing into the reincarnation of an Indian medicine man. Last Days by Adam Neville, $2.99. And when guerrilla documentary maker Kyle Freeman is asked to shoot a film on the notorious cult known as the Temple of Last Days. It appears his prayers have been answered. The cult became a worldwide phenomenon in 1975. There was a massacre, including the death of the infamous leader, Sister Catherine. Kyle's brief, brief is to explore the paranormal myths surrounding the organization that became a testament to paranoia, murderous rage, at cult rituals. He's a pretty good author. Tell Me I'm Worthless by Allison Rumfeld, $2.99. Three years ago, Alice spent one night in an abandoned house with her friends, Ilya and Hannah. Since then, Alice's life has spiraled. She lives a haunted existing selling videos of herself for money, going to parties she hates, drinking herself to sleep. Um, this is a book highly recommended by Criminali. Mary by N Nat Cassidy, $2.99. Mary is a quiet, middle-aged woman doing her best to bend into the background, unremarkable, invisible, unknown, and to herself. But she might be something else. Again, another book, highly recommended by Criminali. What Kind of Mother by Clay Chapman, $2.99. Mixes Southern Gothic, a miss, missing child story, and body horror into an entertaining brew sure to inform your nightmares. After striking out on her own as a teen mom, Maddie Price is forced to return to her hometown of Brandywine, Virginia, with her 17-year-old daughter. With nothing to her name, she scrapes together a living as a palm reader at the local farmer's market. I really enjoyed his novel, 
the remaking, which I read earlier this year. And that is what I have read or bought since October 20th, oh, sorry, since August 20th to October 20th. Again, it was $62.70, which comes to a total average of two dollars and two cents or two or two point zero two 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 cents per book do you think it was worth it i think there's going to be some gems in this collection and many of them will be read for the read what you won't challenge coming up november 5th thank you for watching and keep on reading